Hello, this is David Mandel. It's week three of our class on um, Linux Systems Administration, um, CIS uh, 240L. And um, uh, this is an overview of the week. Um, we will go through the material that I've got listed here under introductory material in this video, and then the other videos will be or the other material will be in another video under the Chapter 4 heading. Uh, first thing we should do is look at Caligator, which you should do every, um, every week. Uh, Caligator this week has, um, um, well, if this week happens to be October 10th of um, 2011, has things like um, the Pacific Northwest um, Software Quality Control Conference, um, um, Ignite Portland planning meeting. Uh, Ignite Portland is kind of an open source -y type thing. I think it's more for business. I've actually never been to an Ignite, but um, I believe those were started by John Seacrest, who is a Corvallis resident, a longtime uh, Oregon State person. Um, founded the state's first um, ISP, um, plug.org, or I'm sorry, peak.org, out of OSU. Uh, it then went independent, and he ended up at the Chamber of Commerce. He's now living up in Bellingham, Washington. Um, Commodore Users Group, Innovation in Motion, um, Portland Werewolf people, that sounds pretty scary to me, um, especially as it's getting close to Halloween here. Uh, and Small Federated Wiki Work Session with Ward Cunningham. That could be a really groovy session. Um, actually, that could be cool. Ward is um, uh, a longtime Portland resident forever and ever and ever. Um, he used to work at Tektronix way back in the old days where he came up with the idea that we could um, build groups that could collaborate together using a technology that he called Wiki. So he is kind of the father of all Wiki things. And then when he discovered that there was such a thing as a World Wide Web, he wrote the first Wiki program to um, implement Wiki's um, as a wiki website. And um, so he's had a lot to do with web or with wiki activity. He's also the founder of a, a type of prog a programming methodology called extreme programming. And um, an interesting man. Um, uh, beer and blog? That sounds cool. OK, well, anyway, uh, let's go back to our area here. And <coughs> I want to mention that um, Lab 4 is on log files, which is actually a little further ahead in the book. And in Lab 4, I said that you may want to read a little bit, bit of material out of one of the chapters way up in the book. Um, but uh, it fits this part of the book quite well. And um, so I have done the uh, log 4 or uh, lab 4 on log files for a long time, even though it's a little bit premature. But if we don't do some of the material now, we'll get really too crowded towards the end of the class. So I think it works well. I had thought about moving, um, making this lab on shell scripting. Um, and I, I finally decided not to do that. But I do want to say the reason I had thought about doing that is because shell scripting is really important. And um, I supposedly, we're supposed to learn a lot of it in our Unix class. But um, as I understand, people don't really get to, um, it, it comes at the end of the class and doesn't always get done uh, as thoroughly as I would like to see it done. It's um, um, it's very important because um, it's a really important tool for Unix sysadmins. Unix, to be a Unix sysadmin, you really should be able to do some shell scripting. Um, and perfecting it will come with time. Um, 
you just need a little bit to start with, but but you know eventually you'll you'll learn a lot of it if you're a Unix sysadmin. Uh, the grades so far look very good. Um, I'm happy with everything. Um, there are a few people that maybe haven't gotten a lab or so in. Remember, um, you have to have all your work in to get an A. You have to have all but one assignment in to get a B. So get it in. It, if it's late, that's fine. Uh, you'll get dinged a little bit, but that won't stop you from getting an excellent grade in the class. Uh, just uh, get it in, because not getting it in will. Um, I was also going to mention a little bit about ethics. And um, uh, Unix sysadmins often have to deal with ethical issues. There's always these issues of how private is things, how private are files on a corporate computer, um, when has somebody really violated something serious? How do you handle it? When do you, you know, uh, ignore the problem? When do you make a big deal of it? What do you do if um, um, a supervisor asks you to do something you consider unethical? Um, systems administrators are in a position where there's a lot of ethical dilemmas. I mention that right now because this week I have spent quite a bit of time dealing with a bit of an ethical dilemma I have where um, somebody on a system didn't act appropriately and somebody didn't respond appropriately. And I'm the middle guy stuck kind of um, trying to clean up the mess or make the mess go away. And um, not always fun. But um, fortunately, it doesn't happen very often. Um, so it's just part of the job. And um, once in a while, it gets where you don't care for it. But by and large, uh, being a, a Linux administrator is really a good job and um, very enjoyable. Um, but dealing with ethical issues is something you have to do as part of this profession. Um, and I guess it's no different than any other profession. If you're an engineer, you have to deal with ethical issues all the time. If you're a doctor, a lawyer, you know, we're all involved in that. I just want to say systems administrators are too. And I think it comes to the forefront for systems administrators much more often than it does if you're, say, a software engineer or a programmer, where, yes, there are ethical concerns, but they're um, they're not so much uh, part of your day-to-day -day life. So OK, uh, I'm going to end this video now. And then we will start up with the videos that come under Chapter 4. So thank you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.